Ten years ago, one man started encouraging people to talk. He wanted to preserve a piece of our lives, and today the program StoryCorps is home to the world's biggest known collection of oral histories. Elaine Cajano is with us. Elaine, good morning. Good morning to you, Charlie and Nora. In this celebrity-soaked age of tabloids and Twitter and selfies, StoryCorps works to share the lives of regular people. The concept? Bring two people together to speak and record them. This simple idea has documented more than 50,000 stories of American life and stored them for generations to come. This is my heart right here, boy, I tell you. I have always had a problem uh, trying to uh, discuss personal things. Dane Holmes brought his father Jonas to the StoryCorps booth in New York City to leave his children a legacy of his family. They have to understand you to understand me. Dane is on the project's board of directors. His father was reluctant to come. My dad is the master of the, ooh, you touched on something emotional. Let me turn it into a joke. Let me <laughs> redirect the conversation this way. Whatever it is, right? Like, he'll find a way out of it. And I just knew if I put him in this room. And there's, you know, there's something about knowing the seriousness of it the ceremony of the place. For 40 minutes, the pair sat alongside a facilitator and began their recording, no cameras allowed. They spoke in a way they never had before. You decided to marry a white woman as an African-American man in 1966 or 7. What were you thinking? <laughs> well, I guess I've, I've been one that never really looked at color. I was colorblind. They left with a copy of their recording and one will be sent to the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., another to the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Their story will be added to the more than 50,000 interviews that make up the StoryCorps archive. What happened on that day is tattooed on your soul. There's no way I can forget that. I wish to God I could. Did I turn out to be the son you wanted when I was born? Like, did I meet your expectations? There's nothing that could stand in my way that didn't stand in yours more. I'm not anxious about whether there's a heaven or whether there's music or clouds or whatever. I'm more anxious about the end of life journey. I want it to be quiet, contemplative, and calm. Being listened to reminds people that they matter and won't be forgotten. StoryCorps founder Dave Isay is a former radio producer. He created the nonprofit with one idea in mind, give people a chance to be heard. The microphone lets you talk about things, lets you tell people who you're sitting with how much you love them, both by listening to them and actually by using that opportunity to tell them what they mean to you. And that happens every day over and over and over again in StoryCorps booths. What has happened to the human voice? With the blessing of each participant, they've created animated shorts that air on PBS. Do you have any regrets? No, what should I regret? And through a partnership with NPR, the intimate conversations recorded inside the booth are heard by millions each week. One story of love and loss has grown to become one of the project's most iconic recordings. I said, you represent a 34-letter word. I said, that word is love. I said, if we're going anywhere, we're going down the aisle because I'm too tired, too sick, and too sore to do any other damn thing. And she turned around and she said, well, of course I'll marry you. Annie Parasa and her husband Danny were among the first StoryCorps participants. We were just being ourselves. We looked at each other in the eye, and he says, should we talk about how we first met? And I said, why not? Let's go for it. And we did. When Danny became ill just three years later, the pair decided to do another recording. When Danny got sick, whose decision was it to, Both. to talk about it? Both. Why? Because he wanted to leave something for people to understand that if you die, you leave a little something of yourself behind. You shouldn't cry. You'd be happy because you've had your time together, and we had our time together. Yeah, in that final interview, Danny spoke about the love letters he wrote for Annie each wife. day. I could write on and on about her. She lights up the room in the morning when she tells me to put both hands on her shoulders so she can support me. She lights up my life when she says to me at night, wouldn't you like a little ice cream? Or would you please drink more water? I mean, those aren't very romantic things to say, but they stir my heart. Well, that's a good one. 
After Danny passed away, StoryCorps listeners began sending letters to Annie. She reads one every day in place of a letter from Danny. It was a way of us not to let go, but to keep a history of what, what happened between the two of us. And now because of StoryCorps, it is a history. StoryCorps has booths in Atlanta, San Francisco, and Chicago, along with a mobile booth that travels around the country. It's also created nearly 10 different initiatives that help ensure a diverse collection of stories will be told mm. and archived. This is a great story. I mean, I always encourage people, go record your parents and for the, your children and for their grandchildren. Just have a conversation about their life. Yeah, because I think what this really is about ultimately is sort of reminding people of how powerful human connections are. Okay. You know, we don't have an opportunity to talk in that way where literally the outside world is shut out. And so the conversations that take place are real and, as you saw, extremely yeah. heartfelt. What a Great beautiful story. love story. Absolutely. Yeah. The importance of reflection, I think, that it causes people to do that they wouldn't normally sit and do. That's right. Lane. Great story. And how did you come across this story? Well, this is funny. Our producer, Rachel Cohen, um, both of us are fans, but she is the one um, who really did all of the heavy lifting on this. Um, she brought this story to me, and I said to her, I know what that is, because I actually had to remove it from my podcast playlist, because on my commute in, I was crying on the train, and people were looking at me, what is wrong with her? So I'm very familiar with StoryCorps, and I will add it back to my, my playlist now. But it's, as you can see, it's just such an emotional, powerful thing, and it's, um, it's really quite beautiful. Elaine, thank you. And you can learn more about StoryCorps and listen to any of the recordings like Elaine does all the time. <laughs> but you can you find them on CBSThisMorning.com as well.